I'm uh, Tony Mazzarella. I'm from a company called Web Access. We do CVCRM development. Um, know a lot of you guys. Uh, hi, if I don't. Um, as I was just saying and half joking, um, but not really so much joking, this is a completely theoretical sort of presentation, okay? If you're here looking for answers, <laughs> you're probably going to get a question back. Um, there's, so this project is in a very, very early stage. Um, so this is actually an interesting um, idea for a presentation. It was one that was actually recommended and, and I jumped on it and I was talking to some guys on the core team and they were like, how, how are you going to do that? Because this is, all the conversations we've ever had have been technical in nature, you know, discussing what sort of frameworks we're going to implement and how we can change the uh, database structure and, and all sorts of, you know, geeky things that we want to do. So, but we wanted to sort of start to make everyone aware, the non-technical, the users, the implementers who may not be involved in the code base, um, of what the idea behind CRM 5.0 is. So this is a non-technical presentation. Okay, if you're a developer and you want to ask developer questions, you can watch Tim's talk from London. You can go find Tim or Karun out there. Um, it is not going to happen here, and <laughs> we'll throw things at you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, what is CVCRM 5.0? As I said, it's theoretical. It is theoretically the next major release. Five comes after four. Um, it's still very much in research and development. Um, it's a community and core team effort right now um, and will be until we have it. Um, it's a lot of work and salad, which we'll get to later. Okay. so. Before we dive into this, I did want you guys to walk away with something, not just, I went and saw this philosophy on CIVI 5.0 and I don't know what to do. So you at least learned something. So if you're not a non-technical person, we're just going to cover some terms. Uh, CIVI CRM, that's why we're all here. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So CMS, um, it's a content management system. Uh, Drupal, WordPress, Joomla, which CIVI CRM is usually dependent on. Um, open source is the underlying philosophy tenant of our project and our community. Um, basically, we build the software and everybody contributes and gives it all back and we all share and that's how we grow and develop and get better. PEBCAC error, common diagnosis. Problem exists between keyboard and chair. Something we, inside joke for techies, it's a problem we face all the time, ourselves included. That's right. <laughs> right. So um, just so you guys understand, just a little bit more geek stuff, but non tech again, this is non-technical, but I want you to walk away with something. What makes the VCRM work? There's a few things. Um, and the, really the reason we're getting into these is because they sort of go into the changes that we want to make and what we can do better. So CVCRM, like a lot of open source projects, is built on what we call a LAMP stack. Linux, Apache, PHP, MySQL. Okay, so Linux is the open source operating system that runs the server, that sort of runs the show, facilitates everything. Apache is the web server, that's what makes stuff show up on your screen. Uh, PHP is the programming language that's sort of the base language that our system runs on. MySQL is the database, that's where all the stuff goes and is stored. And then on top, there's all this other stuff, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. That's what makes it do stuff when you're using it. That's sort of the front forward facing layer that, you know, when you see a window pop up and you see some text on there, that's that top layer. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So CIVI CRM 5.0, the goals of the project. Want to make a more effective code base. Um, CIVI CRM is 10 years old now, and it's grown substantially in the past 10 years. And whenever you start somewhere and you keep adding things and adding things and adding things, it gets, gets big and technology's changed and we've 
you know, adapted things and changed things. And we have a very, very large code base right now. Um, and I was getting into a bunch of different, the layers and the amount of code, but there's hundreds of thousands of lines of code in CDCRM, all said and done. Uh, so we want to provide less, we want to reduce the amount of code. So that means taking maybe functions that are seven lines and making them one line. Doing that will allow us to be more flexible and increase the performance of the software. We want to empower developers. Um, right now, customizing things in CV CRM is fairly difficult. You need to create a bunch of different files to do a bunch of different things. You're dealing with different layers. You have uh, the XML configuration. You have the DOA, the BOA. Then you have the PHP functions that sit on top. So we want to make that a little bit easier, reduce the amount of work that goes into customizing the functionality. We want to have a more robust API. An API is basically it facilitates the connection to your data. So your data is sitting in the database. We want you to have easier, more flexible access to that from the front end. Um, and better tools for developers. Improved user experience. More efficient, more flexibility, and sexy. And we'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, and simple, like salad. So you guys think I'm obsessed with salad, but so the CVC RM 5.0 salad. <laughs> Clearly not obsessed with salad. <laughs> so the CV 5.0 salad. Um, I like this. And when I was trying to figure out how to do this presentation, I, I relied a lot on Tim Otten's presentation in London because that was the only thing really we had out there on this. And he made a really good reference in terms of salad. So that was the only salad thing I could find in the template. So it's sort of, it's a plant. <laughs> so salad is simple, right? Almost anybody can make it. I'm, I probably can't, but almost people, anybody can make a salad. They're easy to consume as long as you have the proper utensils. And they're tasty. There is a disagreement on salad, however. So Tim's salad is very nice and clean. It's healthy. Tim's a vegetarian, so it's all vegetables and healthy stuff. Karun, I don't know if you guys know Karun, but Karun's another person on the core team. Karun's salad is all meat. <laughs> and then you have my salad, <laughs> which is mostly vodka. <laughs> so that's kind of the point, though, because good software like good salad is flexible. It suits your needs. Every organization's needs are different. Every situation is different. And software should, like a good salad, be able to easily accommodate you and still be tasty. And like good salad, software is better with vodka. So um, the best way we were able to come up to sort of illustrate what we're trying to accomplish with Civi 5.0 is talking about forms, okay? Forms are a key part of CVCRM and the part that a lot of the non-technical crew work with the most. It's how you get your data in. There are forms on the back end when you're administrating it. This forms is a huge component to data management, which is what CVCRM does. So there was once a form that did amazing data gathering and stuff, and then he got old and boring and ate a salad with too much vodka and died. That's kind of what happened. We, our form system right now is a bit outdated, and there's a lot of stuff that we feel that we can do better, or at least I'm speaking, I feel we can do better to empower you guys as users. So it's currently difficult to configure forms to different organizations needs. We deal with this every day as implementers, as developers, and as users, I'm sure you face it too. There's a lot of frustrations you have with getting things just right and how you can work effectively. So if you look at the view contact screen, the view contact provides a summary of all of your contacts information. Now, administrators go in there and edit it. Sometimes, you know, users may go in there and edit it. And you want to be able to look at it and quickly get the information that you want. Now, to each organization, what that information is, is very different. 
Right now, if you want to move fields around and change the blocks in different content areas, it requires <coughs> a lot of code, requires development, a lot of effort. So we want to sort of look at how we can make that more functional and accommodating. Um, profiles. This is a big one. The field order, the field structure. You registered to come here, right? First name, last name, different lines. Waste of space, not usable. I mean, it's usable, it works. But you're wasting a lot of space. It's not aesthetically pleasing. And from a usability standpoint, it makes your forms like this long. So we want to look at ways that we can potentially put first name, last name, like you would on any form that you'd write out on paper or other softwares. Um, event registration. Right now, the event registration form is very focused on an individual registration. It supports multiple registration, but it's not very easy. It's sort of clunky. It's a little awkward. You fill out all the information on first page. You select second person. You're adding another person. Then you go to the following page and fill out their information. So we want to revisit the multiple person registration and also multiple registration types or multiple transaction types. So having an event registration where you buy a t-shirt and you donate $50. Right now it can be done, but again, it's a little bit awkward and kind of clunky and doesn't always work right and problematic for us as implementers. So um, with some of the ideas that we're looking at, a lot of this would be remedied. So it can be done. We've, we have sort of seen glimpses of the light coming in through the web forms, the VCRM module, and the WordPress Gravity Forms plugin. Okay, what that does is basically provides the front end integration to the CVCRM database, but with more flexibility as a form builder. We want to do that and then take it farther. Make it CMS agnostic, which these are both tied to a CR uh, CMS right now. Make it sexier. Drag and drop. Red beards. And um, more importantly, make it part of the core software offering. So how do we get to Civi 5.0? Um, it's not really easy. Uh, there's a lot of requirements. So we have all the techie stuff. Like we're looking at doctrine. You know, we've been using a lot of Angular to make things work and feel better when you're using Civi CRM. Um, but, you know, just so you guys understand the scope, um, you have to, we would have to take what we have now, our existing code base, and rewrite a lot of code, like hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And you can do that automatically, you can do it manually, you can blow it up and start over, but that requires a lot of planning, a lot of roadmap, and a lot of resources because we still have to keep CVCRM working and running well for everybody else. Um, so that's a bit of a challenge, and that requires time money and people, humans, resources, um, and you know the community support in terms of feedback, backing it, making the decision to support an initiative like this. Um, and there's a Laura Mifton in there for whatever reason. <laughs> so um, the challenge is... Before you go yeah. on that, mm -hmm. last, last year at the 5.0 discussion at CityCon, mm -hmm. Dave mentioned we've been struggling to get this started we never seems like we never have the people to take off a project we, we always say when we get the resources we'll put somebody on it so we can't we never have the resources so we're taking two people and we're putting them on it and we're going to get them started on starting to lay this out right. did that happen is that still going on or? is to my knowledge that has not happened um Basically, I mean, this is one of those things that a decision has to be made. You know, you have to decide, okay, we're doing something like this, and then figure out how to do it. I mean, that's completely just my opinion on it, but, you know, something this big, it, what, these things typically tend to just sort of be a lot of talk until a decision is actually made. Um, I think everybody's on board that they want it to happen. It's just a matter of 
figuring out how to make it work, how to make it feasible and sustainable, and still sort of keep the project moving forward. Because regardless, it's going to take a significant amount of time. You know, that, um, I think, you know, if you look at Tim's talk, I think the, the BOA layer alone has 92,000 lines of code in it. And that's one of the things you're looking to eliminate. Um, so it's, 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 I mean, it's, uh, it's a good question. I don't really know. I'm not involved directly in that decision-making process, and I'm not sure what that process is. I know there's activity going on in the forums, and, you know, Tim and Karun, they're, you know, talking about salad and everything, so we're getting somewhere with it. Um, so, again, the challenge is, again, a significant amount of the code base has to be rewritten, which will take even a large team a lot of time, and then there's always bugs. There's always, always bugs. Um, we have limited resources. The core team is a fairly small team, and a lot falls on their plate. So something as large as this um, being added on to an already stressed workflow is going to be something that needs to be figured out for this to be to actually happen. Um, well, I messed that up. So I'm way, way, way early because I talk fast. And like I said, this is purely theoretical, so we can discuss philosophy after if you want. Um, so now that we've, you guys know about 5.0, um, here's what you guys can do to help. I mean, we definitely want feedback. The core team wants feedback, and that could just be feedback on 4.5 or 4.6 or how you use it because um, that feedback will help guide the ideas that are flowing into this theoretical project right now and um, help make a decision because again usability is really important you know it's really cool that you can write code but at the end of the day it has to be usable people have to use it um, donate time money and people to the project I'm assuming a lot of you don't have people to donate. <laughs> so um, money is probably the most relevant one here. And there are lots of ways to do that. Um, make it happen campaigns. I'm not sure if there are any for the 5.0 project yet. But make it happen is basically we have campaigns on the site that you can donate a little or a lot to. And we want to make them happen. Um, there's a CV are, there, are there any even ballpark estimates about number of hours and the cost that it's going to be? So, so good question. Um, and the basic answer is no. The longer answer is we want to do a proof of concept first. And we want to pencil in you know, a few weeks to a month for a proof of concept, and then make an estimate for a more complete project. The, the right. proof of concept being the proof of concept being the core form engine that can handle some of the standard uh, contact elements, you know, like name, address, etc. Probably contribution records, um, every single email. Got okay. And so then, based on doing that for a month, get a sense for okay, if we're going to do this whole thing. This is how long we think right. it's going to take based it's, on our experience over the yeah. last month. So we might come out of that and say six months or it's 18 months. Right. Um, but I, it's really hard to say in this business. Because the, it's difficult. On the one hand, it's a significant architectural improvement, which means that we get better efficiency, better leverage out of our work. But on the other hand, it's a significant change from what we're doing, which means a lot, a lot of risks that we probably can't anticipate yet. If, uh, can, can, Go ahead. If, if you had if you had to guess, put a guesstimate in terms of the least number of of man months and the most number of man months, right. and I don't want to. If you say no, I'm not comfortable. I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, okay. So in giving estimates, we have this point of uncertainty, and we're very wide on the. <laughs> 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 Conceive, even conceive of. Right, so let's say six to 24 months. Okay. Man months? Uh, Human months? Person months? Person months, assuming probably 
starting out with two people, but maybe growing to four as it matures and stabilizes. Six to six to twenty-four months with that two to four, two to four. Yeah. All right, so I just tweeted out, court team says six months. <laughs> did, you, did you take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> right. Came on and said. <laughs> back off his thinking, just offered to pay for the no. <laughs> 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 no, but I think it's important to look at that, though, um, in terms of, you know, talk about some of the benefits, and even from the implementer standpoint, um, the amount of time that could potentially sa be saved and the amount of, if you keep your pricing the same, the amount of profit there could be in a much easier, quicker configuration. Um, you know, th there's some value there and I think that that needs to be considered when looking, um, you know, something that, you know, something as simple as configuring how your view contact is displayed, having to hire somebody like me in pay for it, if there is an easier way to do it, that's probably worth a few dollars. Yeah. Yeah? Somebody else jump in, but <laughs> see, I, I think the, I, and I think you're, you're downplaying the importance, of, there's importance of that, but more so, I think of it in terms of expand, improving the usability and therefore expanding the, the community who takes CIVI CRM and uses it because it's easier to use. I mean, those things about moving, I want to change the display. Of the, I mean, to a lot of people, they can't believe that, what do you mean I can't move the fields around on the summary tab? To, I just want this to show up over here. Mm -hmm. And because of the tools that they're so used to using on a day, the way things have progressed, sure. they can't believe you, you, that you can't do something simple like that. And so I, beyond just making it better for developers, mm -hmm. I think it would, I think it would uh, be absolutely. a much more attractive product because that's a standard people are, are there's more, more and more that's a standard people are used to in other things. Absolutely, and in the way we're structured as a community, the experience of the end user is, you know, that implemented layer is, is really right in there and very important. And so, you know, you're spot on. So, you know, I have a question kind of yeah. related to that. So how do you gather that end user feedback as far as you know, somebody who is working in the front end of a development office or putting on the event, and, you know, so, you know, I need to do this and I need to do that. How, you know, you are, are you serving people? Are you serving clients? Are you, you know, or people's clients? Right. Or how? So that, that's, I know that's I can a, tell certain people my opinions, but yeah, that's as far as it really <laughs> see where it needs to be. Yeah, it's an interesting question because, um, you know, again, we're an open source community, so there's not like a help desk or a customer support line you can call up and scream at. I mean, I can give you tons of information if you want. But when you're planning for a new release, uh, mm -hmm. like what do we want to accomplish? How, do you, how does you come to those decisions like that? So it's, it's a lot of feedback that comes, I would say, comes mostly from the implementers and partners in the community that are working on a day-to-day -day basis with the end user. Um, but I think the, the end users were members, they probably have more influence. Right. Yeah, so you exactly. Um, there is a member program. We are trying to engage <laughs> members, you know, to do a better job of that. Um, right now, it's really feedback coming through the implementers and the partners, and we have lots of discussions and arguments and all sorts of fun things going on. Um, there's also the forums. There's you know, we can comment on blog posts with things that, you know, um, be polite. And, um, you know, and you can also contact the uh, core team directly through the site. They're, they're very responsive and that sort of thing. Um, but there's, there's a difference between suggesting something and, you know, s suggesting something and then it actually happens. The expectation isn't necessarily that it's, it's going to happen because there's a whole lot of other variables and things that are going on that, that try and get into it. But if enough people want the same feature or have the same issue or the same bug, it's definitely considered very high. Or have you all have heard kind of the same question coming in from? Exactly. Yeah. Um, does it seem like 
um, a project of this size that's being undertaken um, that would make sense to do um, like a usability study even of non-city serum users, maybe like a couple hundred to get feedback on that aspect of it? I, I definitely I would agree that that's probably a good idea. I don't know at, I mean, and I'm, again, I'm not involved in the tech side and planning of this project, but I think that right now those initial hurdles are so big that that's probably something that once we figure out, okay, how, did, how does that transition actually happen? What are the resources? What's the scope? What's, how realistic is this undertaking? That's all stuff that would be, I think, really awesome. You know, hey, no question. I mean, my only point with that is like, if we're doing all this work, so let's say we did, you know, successfully get the funding for anything like that, it seems like it would be a shame to undertake and complete this project without something like that. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. So, I so a question about that. How would a usability study work on a product that isn't implemented? You would have to build up the interface uh, okay. as a okay. test. Okay, okay. so yeah. you do like a mock-up, yeah. a, 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 a functional mock-up. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, I, I, I from the concept. Certainly, yeah. 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 certainly not a bad idea. I just say similar to what Drupal did with um, Drupal with the Drupal Seven interface, and then going into the Spark initiative, where they drew out what they felt Spark and now Drupal Eight was going to look like, and they put people in labs to prove that it was going to it was going to work better. And, um, and I guess my only thought on that is that I would like personally for Civi to put a fields on the fields on the table basically and let me move let me move them. I'm not sure. I mean obviously we want it to be usable for somebody just to install Civi and make it work. Mm -hmm. But from an implementation point of view, I just want to have access to be able to actually move those fields easily move those fields easily, mm -hmm. have styles that I can that I can select and and work with. So I don't know if you necessarily need a usability study to in the first round of making that happen, that might be something that's more of a second round, a five-five. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, I, and I think the, uh, you know, and, and I think if you, if you, again, I would highly suggest you go back and watch um, this presentation from London. It gets into a lot of the more deeper technical um, concepts that are going on right now. Where do um, we find that? Uh, Google. <laughs> 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 That's where I found it. Um, it's Tim's presentation from London. It's from London Civicon. This year? This, uh, 2014. So 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't, I didn't, that wasn't supposed to be a smart ass answer. That was. So, I mean, we're, we're getting closer. It was, again, very, you know, not a very meaty presentation, it's sort of open discussion. So, I mean, is there any, does anybody have any other questions, thoughts? So, is, I mean, it seems, I've uh, taken the 24 months, which can, or 36 months, even if you went, <laughs> allowed for some right. slippage. Mm. Um, that's a long time. So, uh, is there any way that we could potentially break the project into chunks? So, yes, you know, so I certainly wouldn't do you know, a 24 month estimate as a model where somebody runs off to a basement for 24 months and then maybe you can come back with something and maybe not, <laughs> right? Um, I, I think that the build out path, right, needs to start out with a phase of um, creating the, the core and creating example functionality based on the contact entity and maybe one other entity. And at that point, you have something that it can probably be released and used for some narrow use cases, right? Then you can start incrementally adding other functional areas. So you add CIV event in the next release, you add CIV contribute in the following release, etc. Yeah. So I, I do think that can be broken out into chunks. Right, because there's much less risk in yeah. that approach. Yeah. And then just, you know, then you can replace it. Right, and it's not like you invest the full cost of 24 months yeah. 
and then you know lose it all after two months. Yeah, because I mean, it's like we're, we're a city shop as well. I mean, we yeah. might then say, well, actually, we could do the events part because we need to know how that works. We need to understand the core, the changes. Oh, yeah. So we could take that part on and give it a shot and see. Yeah. Seeing right, very closely. You guys are brilliantly walking my mouth. Thank you, Very, 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 very close. Right, then you Prepare then to throw things. <laughs> I was close. When you started talking about entities, I was going to throw it. But then they just started talking about dates, so we're good. So. Would you, would you, was, is, are, are like activities the other entity when you say contacts? Would activities be the, the other one that you're kind of tying in there? Or? Originally it's kind of like making an estimate. I'm not sure I want to commit to particular yeah. entities. Right? Um, I would I would agree with the statement that activities are an important basic entity. <laughs> <laughs> you should be a politician. Right? <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, just what you're thinking. So does anybody get on? Just I want to get make sure the the users and the are, are getting the just getting any time or questions about how this works. How the process works. If you have any questions on open source and why we're having these <laughs> conversations in general. I think is it just about forms or like what else are you going to be? I mean I guess that's what they're talking about. But. Okay, so there's it's not just about forms. I mean we it is and it isn't. So CBC arm is mostly forms and then mm -hmm. the place where you store the data from forms. Um, there hasn't really been any talk that I've heard of on other functionalities. Um, I mean, Civi's pretty robust as it is now with what it can handle uh, in terms of what it can do operationally. Um, I, I think that, again, by changing the way that we develop, making it easier to customize and easier to make changes, that is going to exponentially increase the functionality and allow developers that are running some of these other larger functionalities as several modules to actually expand on their functionalities as well, more effectively, more efficiently, um, and for less money, which will sort of benefit everybody. And is there something you're looking for in particular? Or? No, I was just wondering if I missed it. Because it was like you said something about one particular aspect that it felt like it. So yeah, we just we focused on <laughs> forms. It, it was actually Tim's suggestion because it's it's, it's something that everybody has to deal with mm -hmm. in CBCRM. It's the most upfront, in your face sort of illustration of what can be done better. And um, there would be a significant impact with the proposed plan on using forms. Um, you know, it, I don't think we're anywhere near where it's like, okay, how are we going to handle the next iteration of City Case in 5.0? And, you know, what cool things can we add to, you know, City Mobile or CSMS, it's, it's not really there yet. It, it, this is a very core schematic infrastructure sort of idea um, at this point, very early stages. So, anything else? I would just suggest, you know, being going back to the you know, end users input that, or you know, just point out that there are a lot of people that end users, you know, see themselves as part of the community, but it's not just about, and you are. hey, I want this, do it for me. And um, But, you know, when it comes to doing some of that, that research or, you know, the focus group, however you want to do it, that would probably volunteer their time you know, to help you out. Yeah, I think that's a, and as well. it's a very interesting idea. Um, that's what a lot of us do anyway, so. Right. Yeah, I think. And with the PR problems you run into, the people that don't get what they want. <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's the tough thing with the community is keeping everybody happy is, you know, and there's all these users is very difficult. <laughs> um, and even among the partners and everybody else, we're all a little bit difficult with what we want sometimes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's definitely something that um, we can look at and consider. I, I, like, I, I did like your idea of doing some sort of polling. So we're a community of resource, not just a... Yeah, not just absolutely. Policy. And if you sign up for the member program, we'll know how to contact you. <laughs> yeah. It, we're, not the, we're not the first community to be in, in this position where there's an installed base and we say there's a big installed base with a lot of effort and we know we need something different and it's a big effort in order to do it, but we know we need to do it and where we need to do Has anybody like 
done a look at, okay, what of others who have been in our shoes, how have they approached it, and what's the approach they took? Uh, again, I, I can't really comment on the approach that's been taken in coming up with these concepts. Um, you know, if you go into the, the 5 saloon, there's a lot of talk and a lot of information on, on the different things that are going on. Um, I, I think that that's probably worthwhile, but I think it's also, um, if you look at a lot of the big projects and the big mature, I mean, we're a mature project now. Um, it's very, very hard to compare us to a Drupal or a WordPress or doing because there's just so much more to it. And we're very much smaller and much From resources. You know, resources um, Absolutely. You know, for code base, we're much larger, <laughs> which <laughs> complicates things. So it's kind of a perfect storm of how the heck do we do this? Um, but so while I think it, it could be worth looking at getting some ideas, I don't think that there's going to be a perfect fit by doing so. I may be the only person in the room that doesn't know, but I'm pretty new to the community. Can you say a little bit more about the Make It Happen campaigns and the partner program? And sure. Okay. So how to get involved? I plan to do. I'll give you your money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the Make It Happen campaigns are um, functionality based. Uh, so if I need, say, um, I can't think of a good one right now. If What's that? Yes. Civi volunteer. Civi volunteer. So you want to have volunteer management in Civi Sierra. Um, and a bunch of people want it. Basically it's submitted as a make it happen campaign with some initial money to show that it's a viable option. And then it's put on the website and anybody can come in and contribute to it. Reaches its goal, um, which has been previously estimated by core team and you know certain costs. It gets built and given back to everybody to use for free. Um, that's basically the make it happen is. Um, the partners program is for uh, those of us that <clears throat> work primarily in CBCR. So we make, do the customizations, we do the implementations. Um, it gives us access to it. It's, it's sort of a forum for us to communicate. It gives, it funds core team because <clears throat> we're financially invested in the project um, because we make money on the project. And uh, that's, so that's for a lot of us in the room. And then the membership is newer and that's for everybody that loves the VCR. So everybody that uses it. And um, Paul did a lot of work on putting that together. And I don't know the tier, did you even know? I thought you did. A little bit, but not too A little bit, okay. Um, but basically it's, it's tiered, is it still doing the tiered pricing based on your organization's revenue? Um, so we're really pushing for users to and we're going to use organizations to get involved and build up that program. Um, and I think that would be a really good avenue too for further and en deeper engagement and feedback from you guys as well. Because it, it works really well with the partners program and sort of bringing us together and getting access to what's going on. And you are sort of new to the program. Um, Probably the best way to keep in touch all the time is getting on the monthly news newsletter mm -hmm. distribution. List. So if you're not anyone who's interested in this, not on that, that's probably the best the best place to get informed. And there's always highlights on what's cool that's happening out there and things in the partner program and membership program and make it happen projects. So. Yeah, so sign up and say <laughs> I said. <laughs> um, is there anything? I think I may. I don't know if I have another slide or not. I might. Oh. Okay. So, I think we've done that. Um, so that's me. Um, contact information. I'll post this. I'll probably blog about this too, because again, it's in theory, so it might be a good point to start some conversation on everything we discussed in terms of ideas and what we should be doing better, communicating with users, and how you can donate. Um, definitely go to cvcrm.org and check out the 
membership program or the partner program if you're a partner, potentially a partner. Um, if you have any more questions, technical questions, Mr. Rotten. In the back of the room, he's probably going to leave the building after this. Um, and uh, so maybe next year, when we're back here, we'll uh, have something to show. Thank you, guys.